so we're at the halfway point. This is the lecture for module six. We read Whitehead's Adventures of Ideas, uh, section three or part three, philosophical. The other parts of this book are the sociological, the cosmological, and the civilizational. And in this, this part of the book, Whitehead's really doing metaphysics now. And um, it might have been a difficult read. Metaphysics is difficult because of how um, abstract it is and how general the statements that it is attempting to articulate are, the, the truths that it is seeking are the most general truths that there can be. You know, Whitehead tells us that his method of speculative philosophy is descriptive generalization. So he's looking at every aspect of experience and trying to derive analogies that allow us to connect these different special domains in terms of ideas more general than themselves. And then he's trying to coordinate these ideas. And so, you know, the whole problem which drives us into philosophy i mean those of us who are mad enough or weird enough or uh, strange enough to pursue metaphysics um this this happens as um the result it would seem as uh, uh, of a kind of instinct um F.H. Bradley, the British uh, idealist, very influential uh, philosopher for Whitehead, said that metaphysics is the pursuit of bad reasons for what we believe instinctually. And, um, you know, not everyone pursues metaphysics in the form of philosophical discourse. You can also pursue, you know, the answers to ultimate questions in religion, um, in science, for sure, in art, you can pursue metaphysics, you know, down various avenues. And the philosophical avenue is really going to work on language itself as an instrument of, of description, but, you know, also language is an instrument of evocation, of um, dramatization. Right, we don't just want to describe the world; we want to um, convince others of our descriptions. Right, we want to convey emotion; we want to persuade. And so, you know, Whitehead lays out the metaphysical machinery, which is probably not the, the apt metaphor, because it's 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 an organic metaphysics. But he's laying out his categories how he understands the relationship between subject and object, which is a dualism prevalent throughout the whole history of Western philosophy and, and in some um, Vedic philosophy, uh, Samkhya. I mean, it's it's not just a Western thing, this this dualism. Um, and he he tries to relativize it, basically, to put it into process and to say that rather than an object opposed to a subject, there is a vector... There is a, a, a phasic process which moves from object to subject to superject, which really is, is to say back to object, right? So there's a cycling of process issuing in further process. And what process is, right, it's this phasic development from a physical to a mental pole where a transition occurs, inheriting a past, introducing some novelty and anticipating a future. Every occasion of experience is a transition of this sort. Efficient causes operate from the past into the present and there's conformal feelings in each actual occasion which in inherit and feel with in sympathy what has occurred prior 
in their physical poles. And in the, the mental pole, novelty is ingressed, eternal objects or possibilities, um, conceptual alternatives to what was felt as given in the physical pole. And depending on the intensity of the mental pole, of the occasion of experience that we're talking about, more or less novelty is possible in a kind of searching process where what Whitehead calls propositions become possible. Propositions are like, they're not just physical feelings or conceptual feelings, they're comparisons between concepts and uh, percepts, if you want, or, or between conceptual and physical feelings. They're comparisons that, that bring actuality and potentiality into relationship with one another. And so once propositions emerge, you're dealing already with a higher grade form of mentality. And, you know, for Whitehead, what increases the intensity of uh, the subjective experience in any given occasion is the social context, right? And so for Whitehead, societies are um, historical roots of um, actual entities that have genetic relationships to one another and are sharing a common form or a definite characteristic such that we can recognize it and, 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 and see that it is a self-propagating form of order. And, and the whole universe is a nested series of these societies, right? And so social order is, is the way that um, the creative advance lays down a track as it unfolds and complexifies such that um, what Whitehead would call the electromagnetic society uh, forms this um, cosmic envelope around us and like we look out with radio telescopes and we see what we call the cosmic microwave background radiation right this is electromagnetic radiation and it's it's as far as we can see and so for whitehead this is the form of social order and the laws of electromagnetism that sets the um the context for our local universe Right, everything you could say in other terms, everything obeys the laws of electromagnetics, but of electromagnetism. But other laws, I mean, there's also a gravitational envelope. There's a spatiotemporal nexus, right, which is a space time for Whitehead. It's not an already actualized thing or a container out there that we in, exist inside of. In Whitehead's way of thinking about space time, it's a it's a network of potential relations it doesn't exist independently of the actual occasions of experience which are feeling one another in those terms in those spatio-temporal terms and so you know whitehead's not saying space-time is an illusion exactly but he is saying um we don't want to commit the fallacy of misplaced concrete concreteness by thinking of actual occasions and societies as existing inside of a pre-given space-time. Uh, space and time are experiential categories and they arise as a result of the decisions made by uh, actual occasions of experience in their, um, in their choreography, in their um, attempt together to to grow together um, as individual members of a, of a common world, right? And so in Whitehead's metaphysics, he is really trying to make room for, elbow room, as he says, for a kind of private subjectivity, right? But only as a, as a phase of the complete process of concrescence. So when a concrescence does achieve satisfaction, when it's integrated its physical pole, that conforms in sympathy with the past, with its mental pull, which introduces alternatives and builds up propositions um, or, or theories that are considered and then decides finally, when, it, when an occasion of experience achieves satisfaction after deciding how to inherit its past, um, it becomes a a private unit of emergent value and self-enjoyment. 
and then it perishes, right? And gives itself to a future which was already intuited as imminent within itself, but as yet indeterminate. But it, you know, when we, in each moment of our experience, die in the satisfaction of having felt the world in, a, in the way that only we could, we have some intuition that we will affect the future, that, that what we achieved in this occasion of experience has a purpose and will be remembered and you know this sense of self-transcendence is part of what it means to be an individual right so when Whitehead affirms a kind of atomic actuality or he calls it sometimes a cell theory of actuality right the, the reality comes in in these in these pulses of experience uh, he's not saying that these are separate from one another right the privacy is temporary and it perishes back in so we, we arise out of a common past and we perish into a common future even if there's a moment of individual self-enjoyment right what's enjoyable though in that private moment is the value of the past and the um the love of the future the, the sense that you know, here is something that matters, right? And I am a participant in this. It's that it's that basic feeling of of eros, as Whitehead refers to the divine in in these chapters, that drives the universe forward, without allowing itself to forget where it came from. And so, just as we can zoom out to the furthest layer of social order, we can also look inside of ourselves and try to track um, the, the passage of our own intimate inner lives, right? The stream of consciousness, the self-reflective awareness, thinking activity itself, right? For Whitehead, this, this activity, which we each directly in, into it, and each for ourselves, right? You, you can't have my experience of thinking, and I can't have your experience of thinking, yet we each think and create ourselves from moment to moment, right? As a result of this thinking activity. And for Whitehead, this displays a kind of, not social order anymore, right? Because it's not purely habitual, what makes thinking so miraculous, what, what makes our conscious activity so stunning in comparison to everything else in nature, right, is that it's, it's creative. It's not bound by any rule. It makes the rules. It is free to some degree, right? Even if enacting an idea which has been thought freely might prove difficult because of all the contingencies of embodied existence. Nonetheless, in our thinking, there's this direct intuition, this evidence of a, of a kind of freedom. Um, we have the feeling of freedom, you could say. And what we achieve in this freedom, in this inner life, what, you know, the tradition going back to Plato, has called soul. What, what we achieve here, Whitehead wants to say, is, yeah, special, but not divorced from nature. Because, in fact, the soul is intimately woven into the body, our physio physiology, and our, our body, our, our organism, is itself intimately interwoven with its environment, uh, with the rhythms of its environment, and with other organisms which is most of well really all of what that environment is if you think in terms of whitehead's philosophy of organism where even atoms and molecules are organisms species of organisms so um whitehead wants us to be able to connect these two poles of reality right the inner intimacy of our own moment-to-moment -moment life uh soul life 
with the cosmic expanse of cosmic microwave background radiation, right? And, and show how the same general principles are at play here, right? These ideas of nexus and actual entity and society. Whited wants to show how these categories are exemplified across all scales in nature and across all intensities of experience, right? Now, you know, Whitehead is saying that subjectivity and, and mentality is present throughout the natural world, right, at every, every level, but it does gradually intensify, right, as a result of more complex feelings, not just conceptual and physical feelings, but propositional feelings, right, which again are kind of comparative feelings where what's given in physical perception and what's imagined in, in the mental pole are, are fused in various ways and, and mingled to bring forth um, new possibilities, right? So a, a proposition is kind of like a, a theory, Whitehead will say, where an occasion of experience isn't just feeling what's given or what's possible, but what could be given or um, what what was given but might not have been and could have been this other thing. And so propositions, when, a, when an actual occasion of experience is, when it includes propositions in its concrescent process, it is, it is heightening its capacity for consciousness. And when we think about a human being's conscious judgment, right, when we consciously um, discern a fact or a truth about the nature of, of our experience and make a judgment, Whitehead says that we're engaged in a kind of, this is a, this is a propositional feeling that we're enunciating in this judgment. And it's a very complex propositional feeling, but for Whitehead, consciousness arises out of these comparative feelings um, when, you know, you, he says somewhere in process and reality that consciousness is the, is the pinnacle of negation. It's the feeling of negation. So we become conscious when we're not just aware of what's happening in our environment, in our perceptual experience of the, the given world, but we're aware of the contingency of what's given, that it could have been otherwise, that it is this and not that. And the contrast between the idea of not that and that Whitehead thinks elicits consciousness, causes ex that tension between what is and what might be, or what is what is not, kindles consciousness in in this um, process of, of mutual sensitivity of prehensions. And so most occasions of experience don't achieve this kind of consciousness though. Um, but they do undergo um, experience. They are, there is self-enjoyment there, there is aim, there's value being, um, being felt. And so we have to distinguish when we're thinking with Whitehead between experience as such and conscious experience. And he tries to give us a way of thinking about how experience can fold back upon itself, including experiences of possibilities as well as of actualities. And in this, what Whitehead will call a hierarchy of feeling, of feelings of feelings, consciousness can be, can emerge ultimately out of this, this um, tension of feelings.